It has been more than a year since a teenager who was locked up in juvie died from a fentanyl overdose, and we are still working to get answers from the County of San Diego. Team 10 investigator Jennifer Kastner has been pressing officials, just pressing them for several months about how the deadly drug got inside and what's being done to protect other kids. The teen was in custody here at Juvenile Hall in a unit called the Urban Camp. It has since been demolished to make way for the new Youth Transition Center. You're looking at video from inside the Kearney Mesa Juvenile Detention Facility, where 16-year-old Alan A. was found dead from an overdose of fentanyl. His family asked that we not use his last name, but provided photos of him from throughout the years. It happened last September, more than a year ago, but there is still little known to the public about how it happened. ABC 10 News waited seven months for the county to return these documents. More than a dozen of the nearly 200 pages are redacted. This case specifically is right now our number one death case. Paul Parker heads up San Diego Citizen Law Enforcement Review Board, which reviews in custody deaths. I don't see any indication in the paperwork of how the fentanyl got in, why it got in, what protocols, if any, have changed there's very little information to give us context about the situation. Is that common? Well, I can tell you that what we look at are those very things. Yeah. We look at what the investigation revealed on how the substance got into the facility, how the person had access to it, how soon this person was found. The medical examiner's report shows that he was last seen alive at about 8.30 the night before. The decedent was witnessed to be leaving cell 404, whose inmate was suspected to be dealing fentanyl. Ten hours later, Allen was found unresponsive. A small piece of black paper was located inside the plastic shelving unit with white powder noted, along with another small piece of black paper rolled up. The jails around San Diego County are run by the Sheriff's Department, but Juvie is run by the probation department, which declined to be interviewed about the case, citing pending litigation. Sheriff's officers oversaw the investigation, but wouldn't give details, saying they're exempt under juvenile confidentiality laws. Records from the county show an email from a narcotics detective stating in part, attached is a copy of my report. Again, this is only the narcotic possession and sales side, but that report was not given to us. A lieutenant covering the homicide unit wrote in part, I have researched your inquiry and I am unable to provide any details of the case or the investigation, including how the fentanyl entered the facility. That's because of juvenile confidentiality laws. An email reveals that a deputy district attorney had been assigned to the investigation, but his office would not provide details for the same reason. Absolutely. The government has the responsibility for the care and custody of those folks that are for which it is responsible. Parker's been pushing for change from the Sheriff's Department over the region's notorious adult inmate death problem. A report from his team published earlier this year revealed that after considering countywide mortality rates, San Diego jails have the highest number of unexplained deaths in the state. There have been 198 inmates this year alone who were given Narcan after it was suspected that they overdosed, according to Sheriff's records. A crisis they've told us they're trying to Fix. I think many people need to look at it for what it is. It is not necessarily. I think we have to get out of the mindset of looking at criminals deserve whatever happens to them when they willingly take drugs. Well, how many of us watching this right now have had family members impacted by addiction? I know I have and I wouldn't want them to die. Legal settlements and damages from in-custody deaths come out of the county risk management funds. ABC 10 News asked the county for the dollar amounts paid out to families since 2015 and are still waiting for figures. Allen, though, as we mentioned, was in juvie, which is overseen by county probation. The county stated there have been no other fatal or non-fatal overdoses in at least five years. In November, Parker and his team got copies of Allen's investigation and plan to dig for details about how fentanyl made its way through the doors. Public records show that officers shall only conduct a strip search of a youth being booked on certain charges and only after obtaining the permission of the watch commander. According to the county, officers are not screened as they enter the job site each day. We're going to look at the policies, we're going to look at the laws that were in place at the time of this circumstance to see if there's anything that could be changed, if there's anything that 
may not exist right now that we could recommend that may help to prevent further deaths. The law firm representing Allen's family stated that it filed a government tort claim to alert the county of its intent to file a lawsuit, which is standard, but that suit has not yet been filed. In Kearney Mesa with photojournalist Ray Higgins, I'm Jennifer Kastner, ABC 10 News.